Levi vs Kenny. I'm actually super surprised at all the changes and cuts. So what's up guys, Fox in here. Attack on Titan Season 3 Episode 2 gave you this gorgeous chase and battle scene. Levi Ackerman went all out. Even Spider-Man would be proud. Really quickly and let me mention, thank you guys for supporting the changes video for episode 1. Please do like this and subscribe so you keep on getting these weekly. I think for just getting the notes ready for this video alone it was around 6 hours. As for spoilers, same as the last video, any chapters that episode 2 covers is fair game. That means up to Rod meeting Historia in this episode. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. First interesting change involving Levi and Kenny. In the anime, you have Levi trying to slice Kenny while he's midair. He freaking throws a blade at his ass. In the manga, this is swapped. Levi throws with his right arm, and then you have manga Kenny blocking with the right and shooting with the left. Now for some actual major changes. This whole car chase scene is completely different from the manga. This includes the people involved and how the events played out. Let's go down the list of changes. In the anime, you see Ryo Historia and Eren riding the back of the wagon with one Suricor member. In the manga, this Suricor guy you see here, he actually got killed right when Kenny's squad had come in. In fact, he got killed by Kenny's blonde assistant. As for Eren and Historia being here in this cart, at this point in the manga, Kenny had already successfully captured them a long time ago. At this point, Eren and Historia were being transported over to Rot's place in coffins. Kenny purposely made their transportation pretty obvious, since he wanted to draw Levi and his team. After the Survey Corps cart driver is killed by the female soldier, she then hijacks the cart. Keep this in mind, it'll be important later. Now for Levi's badass scene. The anime decided to make Levi Ackerman's trip to the bar very badass. Notice how in the manga, Levi got to the bar right away after running into these three guys from Kenny's team. This does mean that the anime added Kenny getting a few shots in at Levi. Anime Levi also had a couple of seconds to have that brief Kenny flashback. Oh, and do notice that that anime bar doesn't have that big sign in front with the text. Inside the bar, this guy's sausage has four cuts in the anime compared to three in the manga. Major change. Oh, and the old dude is much nicer in the anime. He even says welcome to Levi. Perhaps he's a fan. By the way, I did happen to catch an anime mistake here. When Levi did a superhero landing, he broke both of the doors in the bar. Manga Levi only smashed one of these. However, when Kenny's walking up to the bar, magically both of the doors are back. Who knows, perhaps they're made out of titans. From Levi and Kenny's chat at the bar, the anime cut out Kenny being oh so playful. You don't get to hear about how much Kenny wanted to see Levi's brains. Or about how Levi found this whole situation funny. Next up, we have the scene of Levi going rogue and killing these guys left and right like flies. First off, you have anime Levi that hit this guy in the neck. The wire, however, makes it look like he punctured the guy's face when you're watching. The manga goes ahead and shows you this shot from the front. <laughs> he ouch. Not a good way to go. Next two mofos up, Levi uses their buddy as a riot shield, then slices both of their necks like deli meat. The manga, however, gives you a much closer look at Levi's fine work. One of these guys was almost decapitated. Next up, in the scene involving Potato Girl hearing the gunshots, this is then followed by Mikasa's new dialogue explaining the situation to them. A similar scene did happen in the manga. However, Mikasa and friends were ready on freaking horses. So no horse action in the anime. In fact, the original plan involved for these guys to be on standby, for whenever Levi verified the carriage transporting Princess Eren and the small blonde. Armin and the others were supposed to follow the cart from afar. Next up, getting into another major change. In the anime, Mikasa and friends spot Historia and Eren being taken away. Manga Levi was much more savage. He split this guy in freaking half. This is one of those things that a lot of you were saying got censored. Wonder if the Blu-ray will get more graphic on it. Anyway, continuing, anime Levi sees his guys nearby. He tells everyone to chase the freaking wagon. However, compare this to the manga where Levi tells everyone to retreat as soon as possible. This is where Armin's cart comes into play. Levi tells them that their plans got leaked so they need to get the hell out of there. Their job now is to get as far as possible outside of the city, hopefully without dying. Their plan got messed up so they need to regroup and go after Eren later. So manga Suricor is already in the cart and trying to get away. Meanwhile, Manga Mikasa and Manga Levi are trying to protect their cart from Kenny's squad by killing them as soon as possible. Most of the dialogue is kept the same, except you now have the Surrey Corps chasing after their cart with Eren and Historia that got hijacked. Following this, you have the scene where Mikasa pushes that girl from the rider's seat. Compare this to the manga where Armin was a cart rider. That girl tried to headshot Armin, so Mikasa face stomped her out of the sky onto the cart. 
As for Horseboy in this episode, unfortunately he wasn't wearing that cowboy hat like he did in the manga. So damn it, first his family got cut and now the cowboy hat too. Next up, right here all of these guys were discussing their failed plan, and about how they still don't know where Eren and Astoria are. This of course wasn't needed in the manga, since at this point they already had them. Next up, Erwin's conversation with this military police leader. Originally, Erwin talked to this guy before he arrived at the royal capital. In the anime, it happened afterwards. However, the anime cuts out some of the smaller details. First off, there is no mention of the growing crime within Walsina. Then this more interesting second detail got cut. Near the end of their conversation, Erwin brings up this guy's wife. Apparently in the past, both of these were in love with the same woman. Erwin, however, ended up choosing giant naked guys instead. At first, this seems small, but it is important for Erwin, so hopefully it makes it back way later. Anyway, back to the Surrey Corps. Looks like the anime Surrey Corps decided to stay in the city and retreat to some random warehouse. In the manga, these guys went outside the city to some cabin in the woods. Here, you get the flashback of Armin's first kill that traumatized him forever. Manga Armin, however, was freaking gangsta. Armin got that headshot using that accuracy improving gun technique. Notably, the anime also doesn't give you a close up of the dead soldier. And then the whole scene ends here. Everything past this point is completely anime original. At this point, Kenny probably already had the package delivered to Rod in the manga. Back to the warehouse, unfortunately no campfire for these anime guys. Except for the location, everything here is mostly the same. Oh, but I lied. Major change right here. No Levi abs for the anime. Manga Potato Girl got lucky to be the one stitching up Levi after that Kenny Squad fight. Anime Levi only got that cut on his forehead. And it's funny how I joked about this getting cut, but they actually did it. I still almost can't believe it. So, fangirls forever have been wronged. And I guess some guys too. Does anyone think they'll put this back later? And were you disappointed that this got cut? Anyway, as for more differences. In the anime, you have the Reese boss and the son being present for their conversation. At this point in the manga, the Reese boss had already been killed by Kenny. Recall my previous video how I talked about Levi being cut from the entire warehouse scene. Well, some of the stuff involving the Reese boss and Levi got moved to this scene and location instead. The manga originally had both of these guys talking on top of the wall. Unfortunately, the anime gives a heavily abridged version of that conversation. And honestly, I'm a little disappointed to see how much of the Reese boss conversation got cut. This old guy was really memorable from the manga. Here, Manga Levi made a deal with him under three conditions. Part of this involving Levi's personal request of getting some tea. Now, switching over to Erwin, you got Hanji delivering the juicy Erwin details to Erwin. Notice how in the anime, Hanji's assistant is present for this scene. In the manga, however, these two actually continue discussing things for a while. They talk about why Reiner and the Warriors wanted Eren, about why both the Warriors and government would want Eren's Titan controlling ability, about how the Titan power could possibly be transferred, and even Historia's past is brought up. Since it suddenly cuts off in the anime, I'm thinking this stuff is going to be brought up later. Hopefully. As for Sanus and his buddy getting tricked by the Reese boss, this was part of the deal that the boss made in the manga too. However, the details were much more different. Instead of simply delivering Sanus to Levi, the boss guy dropped these poor suckers off a freaking cliff. You then have Levi and Hanji picking both of them up from the river below. The anime version keeps this delivery much more simpler. On the topic of the Reese boss, the anime added this new scene of the father and son chatting here. Unfortunately, the anime makes it seem more like the boss is concerned with the profit aspect of all of this. Originally, this conversation took place during their involvement with the Survey Corps plan. They would turn into Soria and Eren, meanwhile the Survey Corps would follow closely behind. This was shortly before Kenny came into the story present day. In the manga, the boss tells his story that Levi isn't a bad guy at all. But still, smack that guy after she's sitting on the throne. Since Reeves is now dead by the end of this, and he never met Historia anyway, I am disappointed that this whole conversation with her got cut. I'm thinking that at best they could give the scene to the son instead. You might be wondering, why is this even important? Well, it actually goes back to an earlier moment with Historia. You had the Survey Corps finding out about Erwin's plan, which involved Historia becoming the new queen. Here, you had a shot from Levi kindly asking Historia to take that role. That is now gone. You even saw Levi give her that Ackerman shakeup. Naturally, anyone that got asked to become the ruler so suddenly wouldn't immediately agree to it. However, when you got Levi asking you to do something, you do it. The end of this has the poor girl agreeing to take on the new role decided for her. 
So even if you forget all about the Reese boss, this does take away some development for both Historia and Levi. Next up, 50 Shades of Hanji, or should I say censorship? The manga gives you a much closer look at all of Hanji's toys. For claiming to be new at this, manga Hanji comes super prepared. One change for the anime is how Levi actually goes ahead with his 50 questions before Hanji begins. However, manga Hanji was much more determined to do everything Sanis did to Nick before the questioning even started. Once again, another prediction for my cuts or censored stuff for season 3 is coming true. At this point, perhaps half of my predictions have come true so far. Switching over to the other group, you have Armin and friends listening in. One major change right away is that Eren and Historia were originally present for this. The anime also cuts out Eren giving this half-assed plan to frame the king and military police and then have the Serbia Corps come in to save the day. This included that super weird and demented face as he admits to joking around about this. And I really thought Isayama liked this shot of Armin. Anyway, back to Hanji's fun interrogation scene. The anime cuts out Levi tenderizing Sanis. Seems the anime also added Hanji's buddy to take part in this too. You then see Hanji proudly displaying her fine work involving his nails. You only see actual nails for less than a second in the anime. So, you might have guessed it. Manga Hanji puts the full plate out for you to enjoy. As Hanis goes down the list of people he's killed, the anime cuts out the mention of killing a gun creator too, supposedly for threatening the king. Further cut from the anime was Sanis confirming that he's been suppressing technological advancements within the walls. They also thought that the Survey Corps would wipe themselves out, hence why the king let them continue. You then got some more hospitality from Levi that didn't make it into Season 3. Also cut was Dentist Hanji. As Sanis is questioned further about the Ray's family, you never get to see Hanji's amazing dentist skills. This actually would have been harsh to see animated. So, how do you feel about this being censored or toned down heavily for the anime? Was all of this cut out to make Hanji, Levi, and the Surikora look better? Hmm, it looks like anime Sanus got off way too easy. As for Hanji's fun ride continued, the anime actually cut out Hanji's threat to slice this guy's nuts off. I was sad to see this gone too, especially in the way that this guy spilled everything after that threat. Next up, Kenny. Kenny staying true to his name. It originally took place in the forest after the Surikora's plan backfired. And then you have the final scene up. Historia meeting up with Daddy, while Princess Eren is like, this crap is happening again? He seems totally used to it. Notice how these guys were originally delivered in coffins. And Kenny was also present for this personal delivery. Alright, so hoping you enjoyed this breakdown for episode 2. Definitely like and subscribe if you want to see these weekly. I'm hoping there's still enough of you interested. But anyway, let me hear from you now. Question of the day. Who's disappointed about Levi's abs being cut? And how do you feel about all these changes? Anyway, definitely give it a colossal thumbs up and subscribe. If you're new to the channel, I put out 5 plus anime videos here every week. That includes a lot of Attack on Titan content. Hopefully you've seen my video for changes on episode 1. Be sure not to miss my breakdown on the season 3 opening. And also my video covering everything about Kenny. And I'll see you guys later.